Welcome to the Housing Solution Revolution, where we revolutionize the way you think about your housing options, discuss how to get financing for your home, and connect you with experts who can walk you through your personal housing solution. And now, your host, Johan. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining and welcome to another episode of the Housing Solution Revolution. I have a very special guest today. His name is Peter of Indigo River Tiny Homes. Hi, Peter. Hi there. Uh, so today we're going to learn a little bit about tiny homes. I don't know too much myself, but hopefully uh, Peter can tell us more and uh, uh, we can see what this is about. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you more than you probably ever wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get into this? Um, I've got a background in construction. You know, um, Back in the 2000s, I had a company building storage sheds, so it was I was used to the small construction, then I moved into remodeling, um, and I was doing remodeling for, for quite a few years. I really liked that, but then I found out about tiny houses about two years ago, and just kind of fell in love with the whole concept of the tiny house movement, and I love how the people act more as a community and you know really help each other. I love the idea of the tiny house. I'm, I'm a minimalist, personally. Uh, I have a family of six, not everybody in my family is, so we don't live in a tiny house, but I would if it was just me. (laughs) And so I just love everything about them, and and I love how much functionality and customization you can do with each one. Really, for me, it's my way um, to express myself. I don't want to say artistically, necessarily, but that's the kind of the way I feel about it. You said that uh, communities are like more tight knit and they help each other. Can you explain a little what that means? Sure. So, like here in the Dallas area, we have the DFW Tiny House Enthusiast Group, which is a, a Facebook group and a meetup group. Um, it's basically the same people on both, but they schedule the events on meetup. Ours is actually the largest tiny house enthusiast group in the nation, and uh, there's like 2,500 members, wow. and they have build day so people that are DIY building their tiny house uh, they can post on there and say hey I'm, I need help with this on on this weekend um, installing the air conditioner or framing up the walls and people will show up and and help each other out because they they just want to help they love tiny houses too and they want to learn for when they build their tiny house <laughs> well, why are so many people flocking to this movement? I mean, what's the purpose behind uh, the tiny home movement? There's a lot of different reasons. Probably one of the biggest drivers, though, is the affordability of it. Um, a lot of people are trying to, you know, reduce their debt and just get out from under a, a home, you know, a 30-year home mortgage. Or we have a lot of people who are retirees that want to do it. You know, they just want to downsize have something more mobile, maybe their kids live far away. Several of my customers have uh, kids that are in different states, so they can move their house with them, you know, wherever they go to visit their, their kids. And, and they're a lot nicer than, you know, an RV, because a lot of people are doing that with RVs, but, right. you know, the tiny houses, it feels like a home. Okay, it's more homey. So yeah. what, what really are the differences between an RV and a tiny home? So an RV is, is by design made for temporary living. So inherently they use lower quality materials and they're not designed to last as long as a tiny house. So a tiny house uses more conventional construction methods, um, just adapted to an RV type trailer. You know, they do have to be heavier duty than a standard RV trailer as well because they weigh quite a bit more uh, than than an RV. Uh, About how much would be the, the difference? So a 24 foot tiny house is going to weigh around 11 or 12,000 pounds, whereas a 24 foot RV is probably going to be more around six or 7,000. Oh, a significant difference. <laughs> wow. Yes, yeah, so almost, almost half the weight. So, like when we build a tiny house, we want to build it to last, you know, at least 30 years. We want to come back and see that house still in good, livable condition. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a, an RV after 30 years. Yes. Have, have oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're usually not in very good they shape. They look a little exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> they're usually pretty worn out by that time. And so we want them to. We wanted to make our houses something that people can live and and grow into and and keep with them wherever they go. I call it a home of your own wherever you roam. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> and, and one of the other draws to the tiny house movement is you know the mobility of it. A lot of people don't be want to be tied down to one location. Some of our customers have 
job where they have to move every year or two. They don't want to have to establish a new residence every time they pick up a move. They can just hook up their house to a truck and take it to wherever they're going. <laughs> so that, that's, that's another draw to it is the mobility of it. You know, people that want to live a more nomadic lifestyle too. <laughs> what about for people who maybe don't have uh, the necessity to travel so much? Do they put it in one spot? You know, how would that work compared to a, an RV or a regular home? Yeah, so most people don't move their tiny houses that often, you know, every year to two to three years. And so it is common to just put them in one spot and keep it there. Compared to an RV, you know, there's people living in RVs full time right now. Mm -hmm. You know, even though they're not really designed for that, the RV lifestyle a lot of people like. <laughs> you know, and because again, they're, it's an affordability thing and a mobility thing um, that, that people are attracted to. So price-wise, what would be the, the difference between a similarly sized RV versus a tiny home? You know, the, the price range is pretty vast on RVs because I've seen them, you know, I've seen RVs that were $350,000, mm. you know. Luxury <laughs> RVs, the tailgaters maybe. <laughs> well, yeah, like, you know, the bus, the ones that are like a bus yeah. where the sides expand out, things like that. It's a half uh, a transformer there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, they can get really expensive and not necessarily based on size, but the features, you know, your average RV is going to be per square foot cheaper than a tiny house because they are using cheaper materials. Mostly. But you're saying that they last a bit longer. The tiny homes do would probably last longer than. Oh the yeah. RVs. Oh, okay. definitely. Yeah, definitely. You know, our price range, you know, our, our houses start at you know, around 50,000 and they can go over up to over a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. So, you know, there's pretty fast price range and it yeah. depends on size and the features that you get with it. So we had our most expensive houses, you know, fully decked out for off grid living with a top of the line solar power system, um, composting toilet, rain catchment system, onboard water tanks. Uh, you know, it, it was really decked out. <laughs> uh, and, you know, that one was about 125000 so most of these people, you said they're maybe trying to reduce their debt, trying to live a more affordable lifestyle. Mm -hmm. How can someone afford about $120,000, $125,000? Do they have a loan or do most people pay in cash? Well, that particular customer paid in cash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and it was a vacation place for them. So oh, okay. uh, really financing is one of the biggest challenges for our business. For tiny houses, there's really not good options out there. You know, we have a couple of banks that we work with, um, but one requires a 25% down payment and one, the other requires a 20% down payment and with payback terms of only 10 years. So that makes the payment still pretty high. Mm -hmm. As an RV, you know, they have terms with, you know, 15, 20, I think even longer than that sometimes. Uh, so, you know, they can get the payment down lower um, and lower down payment with as low as like 5 or 10% down. You know, we just don't have that option available to us at this time. All right, so can you really tell me how uh, FHA or HUD would be able to approve the homes to be able to get uh, loans from the bank or have a better situation to convince the banks to invest in the tiny home? Well, that's that's kind of the issues with the tiny home movement or one of the, one of the challenges is because these homes don't actually qualify for HUD or FHA requirements. So what is considered a tiny home is is a house that's 399 square feet or less, typically because HUD has designated the minimum habitable space for humans is 400 square feet or more. So they've, they've determined that's the minimum square footage that they will approve uh, for a, a standard mortgage. So typically tiny houses are gonna be 399 square feet or less. Because of that requirement, they're gonna be classified as you know, a recreational use type home. Could you build one that's, you know, between 400 and 1,000 square feet on a, on a foundation? I know a lot of people do look for small homes, but it's yes. hard to find that in nice communities per se. Right, yeah, absolutely. And we can do that, absolutely. The, um, the cost per square foot is higher, you know, on a smaller home than it is on a large home because uh, you still have to do all the same infrastructure for the sewer, the gas, the electric, the water. So... Uh, the cost per square foot is higher on a on a small home, but we can absolutely do that on a on a foundation. Those would qualify, you know, for you know, 400 to 1,200 square feet is typically considered a small home, um, and 
So those do qualify for the HUD and FHA. There is a neighborhood out near Granbury, I believe, that is doing homes like that. I saw it, it's been a while since I've looked at that, but uh, there, there was a neighborhood and they're doing small houses, all small houses, typically for retirees who just want to downsize and have something lower maintenance and less upkeep. But I, I want to go back to the tiny house. The advantage of the tiny house not being able to be FHA or, or HUD approved, it's also not classified as real property. So you don't pay real estate taxes on it. You pay sales tax on it when you buy the house. And then after about three years, you've recouped your, your tax cost because you're not paying uh, real estate tax. You, you just pay your taxes up front. And we know in Texas, those property taxes can be quite high. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> what would you say to banks uh, to tell them, hey, this is a good investment. You know, this is, and maybe you believe it's better than RVs and they yeah. should invest in this rather, or in addition to RVs. How would you convince a bank to uh, give you an opportunity? Well, really, there's there's a vacuum in this market. So we had one company come in um, into the market last year, and I don't know what the what their deal was. If they were just trying to make a quick buck or or something like this, they the loans never materialized. But what they were offering was a five percent down payment and uh, up to twenty five year payback. They had so many applications come in all at once that. It, they were overwhelmed. Oh. They said they never could get the funding for any of the loans. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, and it, was a, it was a private equity deal. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know exactly what happened with that. The whole thing kind of fell apart. But they had, you know, hundreds of applications because people wanted the houses. There's no, but there's nobody around to provide it. They were, they were, they were shocked at the level of response that they received. Oh, okay. So. And um, typically on these loans, you know, I know a lot of banks are concerned about, well, what if they're not able to pay back? What is the value of a, of a tiny home in the future? Do you think the value would increase or decrease as time goes on? I, I believe it would decrease. Is there, I would say the depreciation on these is comparable to an RV. So if you bought a $75,000 tiny house or $75,000 RV, the depreciation would, would likely be about the same. And you know, the default rate on the loans would likely be about the same. There's a lot of similarities in the market there in terms of, of the people that are buying them. I would say the people that are buying a tiny house are a higher quality of owner if, you know, if they are living full time. I know there's a, a couple of RV B parks that prefer tiny houses over RVs. Wow, why so? Because the people living in a tiny house are more conscientious they're more purposeful and they take more pride in their home because they're, you know, a lot of the RV parks, especially close into the Dallas area, are full of full time RVers, people that are living in their RVs full time because it's a cheaper way to live in the Dallas area with the way rents are going, oh, yeah. the way housing prices are going. It's a much more affordable way to live. And so they're actually full of people that are there full time. They're not traveling in their RVs. Some of, you know, some of the people there are come and go, but. Uh, they're living there all the in full full time, and they're the people living in the tiny houses are better tenants. <laughs> so how does so that work? They, they take more pride in their home. I'll say. <laughs> well, how, how does that work? How does someone manage to live full time? I know it's kind of a gray area in the laws. You know, it's is it a recreational vehicle? Is it on foundation? How does that work? So basically, the short answer is you can park and live in a tiny house anywhere. It's legal to park and live in a, in an RV. Okay. So that's going to be an RV park. A tiny house community um, or your own piece of property. There are tiny house communities. Yes. So a bunch of tiny homes permanently settled or still on wheels, still moving around? Still on wheels, still mobile. Okay. So it's basically like an RV park, but they don't let RVs in. <laughs> <laughs> They've so, chosen the tenants they prefer. <laughs> right, right. And this, you know, in typically it's other people who are tiny house enthusiasts live in a tiny house. There's a couple of them out west of Fort Worth. Um, there's one being built right now in Lake Dallas. It should be ready uh, August 1st. That's And that's the first one in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that's within the city limits mm -hmm. is the one in Lake going in in Lake Dallas. And there's 13 spaces. Uh, the two houses we have under construction right, right now will be parked there. And then I heard there was one up in Little Elm. I haven't heard much about that one, but I heard there, there's, there are plans to build one up in Little Elm. 
And then there's also people that have their own property outside the city limits because there's not as much regulation on it. So if you have your own piece of property outside the city limits, um, you can park and live in your RV there or your tiny house there. And there's people that have land and maybe a house there already and allow people that live in tiny houses come park behind their house and pay them rent. And so what, what would you say to city officials or... Uh the city itself like hey you know this is a good movement we wanted to promote it you, you know you told me some differences between rv parks and, and a tiny home community mm -hmm. um what would you say to them like you know i know it's not the property value but there's a lot of benefits to having this how would you convince them to let tiny homes stay a lot of cities are actually considering it like the city of dallas is considering it um, i believe the city of plano is actually considering it, which i found surprising uh, <laughs> allowing tiny houses on wheels to be parked in, as an accessory dwelling unit. So an accessory dwelling unit by city code is basically a guest house. And so you have to, typically it's got to be on foundation. So the city of Dallas does allow a tiny house. On foundation. On foundation. Okay. So Does it have to be adjacent or attached to a home or on its own on foundation? It's okay. It, in city of Dallas, and this I think this is the only, might, might be the only city around that I know of that will actually allow you to have a tiny house on foundation as the primary residence. And you can also have an accessory dwelling unit mm -hmm. um, as a tiny house, you know, as your guest house. So what's the difference between out. building on wheels and building on foundation? So building on foundation, typically, you know, it's, it's going to be a site-built home. You can get some modular units that can be brought in and assembled rather quickly. But on, on foundation, the... The expense is a little bit higher, but it is maybe 10% more than building on wheels. Um, and, and then it's there permanently, you know, it so they can tax it. Oh, <laughs> I see. So it still meets the regular codes and yeah, you still have to get building permits. Yeah, have to get all this, all the uh, you know, all the building permits and, and inspections that you'd have to get to build a regular size home. You'd have to get for your tiny house, and so that's that's kind of the regulation right now. Not all cities allow ADUs, but you know, if your city and your homeowners association allow them, you know, it's a it's a good way to go. A lot of people are interested in that for you know their aging parents. You know, they're interested in having something built to house their parents in. Now, I know a lot of our listeners they uh, they want to do these moves, right? Mm -hmm. But they typically don't have a lot of money. They want to do it themselves. They listen to podcasts. They've seen videos, but they don't really know how to proceed. What advice would you give to someone that's like, I'm ready to build my home, I don't know where to start? <laughs> how do you how do you go about the process? Uh, that's a that's a great question. I would start probably with the DFW Tiny House Enthusiast Group. Um, they there's a lot of good information on that in their group. They have a, a files page with a lot of the frequently asked questions and like, what do you do about this? What do you do about that? Where can I park my tiny house? Um, there's a lot of people that want to DIY their tiny house, which you know it's it's good, um, but I've, here, here's something I would say to somebody who wants to DIY their tiny house. If you don't have a lot of construction experience, you might be better off just buying a completed one and, and financing it. <laughs> because If you can get the, get the financing. Because I know people have been working on their, their DIY house literally for years. <laughs> so, so ha you know, that's really the struggle. A lot of people want to get into a home, but they just cannot afford it. So mm -hmm. really, would you say it's up to the banks to help the community find more affordable housing? Or is there a way these people can, uh, you know, build up to a situation or uh, maybe work on side with a tiny home uh, builder such as yourself to build their own? It, maybe a little bit of both. Um, you know, the, definitely the banks, like like I said a little bit ago about the, there being a vacuum in this market for good financing for our customers. You know, if, if we had an option with a 10% down payment and a 15 year payback, uh, it would likely double our business. Wow. So <laughs> there's two major obstacles to people who want to live in a tiny home, but can't. The number one is the affordability of it. Cause like you said, a lot of them can't afford a regular size house. They also can't afford even a 25% down payment on the tiny house. You right. know? We also do tiny house shells where we can just finish the exterior of the house for them and they finish out the interior. So that's a much more affordable option for a lot of people. And then, you know, where to park it, you know, that's that's really up to the cities, you know. And we've gone to talk to a couple of cities 
Lake Dallas being the, the first one to have a tiny house village within the city limits, it's not a very big place, Lake Dallas, but it's taken them over two years to go through the planning and approval process. And even once they started construction on the place, a new city planner came in and halted the project. <laughs> and they basically, they didn't have to start all over, but they had to go through, jump through a few more hoops to get the, keep the project rolling. So it's, you know, it, it, there's a lot of bureaucratic challenges to it, I'll say, <laughs> <laughs> both with the banking system and with the with the cities. So, wow. So really, you're, it's minimalist. It's people who want to save money. The, this is the kind of group that we're targeting. But I, a lot of the times, I hear it's mainly the the older generation trying to retire. Mm -hmm. I do know that some young people would like to get going on the tiny home movement, but their concern is also, you know, where do I get my mail? You know, if I'm traveling around. Right. Um, but what about my ID and permanent residence and, and you know, how, how does that work? My, my address. A, mm -hmm. a lot of people do just use their parents' address okay. as, their, <laughs> <laughs> as their permanent residence, you know, or, or, you know, and or get a, a post office box to receive their mail and things like that. There's also some services that will receive your mail for you, scan it and email it to you. Oh. <laughs> so there's a, there's at least one or two services out there like that. Um, but yeah, this. For the younger generation, probably the, the money is the biggest challenge to it. For the people that are wanting to retire and looking at, at doing a tiny house, a lot of those people have some money saved up and can afford the down payment. It's the younger generation that, you know, they're still paying off their student loans. Maybe they haven't been in the workforce that long, haven't had a chance to save up a nest egg to purchase a home or, or even a tiny house, you know, make the down payment on tiny houses. It's still challenging, you know, for 75000 Let's say an eighty thousand dollar tiny house, you still need a twenty thousand dollar down payment, which is out of reach for I'd say a, a, a large portion of the population that wants to live tiny. <laughs> now, for seventy five thousand dollars, what do you get? Uh, a fully move in ready tiny house. That's the starting price for our thirty two feet long, eight and a half feet wide, thirteen and a half foot tiny house with two sleeping lofts that includes appliances, bathroom, cabinets exterior finish a totally livable house now i've got to say for our listeners when i walked into this i expected it to be a bit more crammed and the ceilings are tall there's it's a lot more spacious than i expected they're really really well made and and I'm, i was pleasantly surprised uh can someone really do everything they do in a home in a tiny home yeah i like to say it's everything you need and not a thing you don't <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's kind of the way way I look at it. So you kind of pare everything down to only the things that you really need and are really important to you. You get rid of all the excess, all the junk, yeah. you know, that's not really important to it's you at the end of the day. Yeah. Not necessary and, and really not important to you because wow. not only is it not necessary, but you might just be keeping stuff around. It might have some sentimental value, but at the end of the day, not really that important to you. I found a, a box of mementos a couple months ago and I opened it up and I started going through it I didn't remember what most of the stuff in there was from <laughs> you know and I was like or who I was with whenever I you know I got it and I'm like why am I keeping this stuff I don't even I don't even know why I've got this box still. So it's really more purposeful with what you keep yes. what you use yeah there's a great book on that and it's called the things we keep um, I think it was written by somebody living in a tiny house and is about going through your stuff and identifying what is really important to you. And those are the things you keep. <laughs> Have you heard of the minimalists? Yes. Yeah, there are two guys really inspiring a lot of people to, to live that way. Yeah. Now, we have heard from a few of our viewers that, uh, or listeners rather, that they they feel it's a little empty. They look at that and they're like, hey, you know, it's empty. You know, there, there's a missing space. What do you say to those people? Is it this getting things or acquiring things really make you feel more fulfilled or do you say living more purposefully is, is kind of the path to declutter the mind if you will yes i'm more on the minimalist side that you know <laughs> okay. and i think more people are coming that real, to that realization especially the, you know the newer generation the the gen xers are realizing you know all the stuff that their parents worked so hard for you know at the end under a mountain of debt and weren't really happy, you know. There's, how many fights have you seen about money? In growing up, how many fights have you seen your parents have over money? And so... Well, you see all these toys and clutter in the middle of the room, yeah. which is costing hundreds of dollars. I oh, yeah. 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 
it's not a new way of living, but I think more people are are coming around to that lifestyle and, and realizing, you know, maybe that all the stuff that they're working so hard for isn't isn't really what's going to make them happy. Going back to the parking situation, do you help people find their land as well? Do you help people kind of find where to place their tiny home, or do you only do the building process? We have a list, and it's actually from the DFW Tiny House Enthusiast Group, a list of places that you can park your tiny house. We don't actively seek or, or help them find land. My ad- advice would be to, if you want to purchase your own piece of property to put your tiny house on, is to figure out where you want to be and then find a local real estate agent because a lot of them know about good deals on property that maybe have been sitting around a long time or you know they they might hear about something before it even comes on the market that might be a perfect fit for you so i, I recommend getting a local real estate agent you know if you get somebody in dallas but you want to look out uh you know near terrell for some property you might want to <laughs> considering looking at, at a real estate agent out there but yeah we don't we don't provide a service like that though Okay. Now, you know, you got them parked, ready to go. Do you plug them to the grid? Do they have their own electricity? How does that work out? Yeah, all, all of our tiny houses have standard RV hookups. So you can you can hook it up the same way you do an RV with a 50 amp power supply, which is a big fat power cable, <laughs> <laughs> um, a potable water hose, and a septic connection or a sewer connection. So they have a, a sewer drain that you connect just like an RV would. Um, to a to either a septic or a, a sewer line, but we do have off grid options as well. We built we built tiny houses that are completely off grid. They have no connection to any type of uh, city water power or sewer supply. And you said you could also do it with solar panels and, and oh, yeah. that situation. Too. Yeah, solar panels integrated into the roof, battery system, and composting toilets are are popular among tiny houses just because you don't have to worry about a septic system, but they do require some maintenance. <laughs> so not everybody's a fan, but they are rather popular amongst the, the tiny house movement. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I really appreciate you talking to us. Uh, is there anything else you'd really like to say? Uh, and of course, please tell them where to, where to find you. How can we connect with you? Our goal is really to connect our audience to these experts from banks to realtors to tiny homes and RVs, whatever it may be. So where can we find you and what would you like to say to the audience? Uh, yeah, we're Indigo River Tiny Homes. We're located in Garland, Texas. Our website is www.indigorivertiny.com. We're pretty easy to find. If you just Google Tiny Houses Dallas, we should pop up there. We'd love to talk to you if you're interested in tiny house or just want to come by and, and check them out. We have uh, open houses uh, at least once a month. And uh, the one thing I'd, I'd like to say about anybody who's thinking about going tiny is just do it. (laughs) All right. All right, Peter. Thank you so much. Thanks, Johan. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Housing Solution Revolution. If you're interested in connecting with Peter or you have questions about tiny homes or even if you have suggestions for another episode, please message me at yo at housingsolutionrevolution.com. That's Y-O at housingsolutionrevolution.com. Till next time.